show you a really easy, reusable found poetry project. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with found poetry, usually what you do is you take a page from any written text, usually something printed or a book, and you draw on it. Um, I've always been too nervous to do that, so I'm really excited about this idea I've come up with to do it in a reusable way. Um, so what, I'm, what I did is I had a broken frame and I saved the glass from it, but you could easily take a, your glass out of a, a picture frame you are using and borrow it for this, because it doesn't get damaged, you can wash it off and use it again. Or you can use a piece of plastic, like a sheet protector, or um, my son got a package of stickers and it came in a little plastic sheet, so I just cut off part of that and this works really well too. Um, but I'm going to stick with the glass just because it's less reflective for the video and it sits on the page a bit um, heavier. So the book I'm going to try this project on today is The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I have this cool little uh, edition. And the best way to start the found poetry project is just to randomly flip through your book, find a page, and then put your piece of glass or plastic on the page. Whichever side is the opposite from your dominant hand, I find is easier. And if you're lucky enough to have window markers, these work great. If not, I test it. You can use a normal washable marker. It just sticks to the glass a bit less good and it might smear more as you touch it. So this works really good. Um, and I'm pretty sure you could do it with dry erase or even permanent marker if you have like rubbing alcohol or something to take it off. So experiment uh, and it should be good to go. And let's get started. So I'm gonna just scan down the text and see if there's a word I like and start by circling that. I'm gonna start with this, it says the cries. I feel like that'd make an interesting start of a poem. Then I'm gonna do seamed. And then I'm just gonna connect the two circles. Oh, and I like this too, it says all noise. The cries seemed all noise, complete. Moments and connect those. And then I'm gonna circle made up. So, so far I have the cry seemed all noise, complete moments, made up. And I'm going to scan some more and see if I find anything else that I think sounds cool with that. Yeah, this sounds really cool. And if you do your circle a bit big, you can just kind of color in the end. Or the nice thing doing this on glass is you could actually just take a wet cloth and wipe it off and start over. The cries seemed all noise, complete moments made up to revive him. Deep in thoughts, I'm just scanning some more if I could see something like with that. The cry seemed all noise, complete moments made up to revive him, deep in thoughts, great, busy, only His senses only his senses would it's kind of tricky with the marker on the words of this close together only his senses would fight The 
creature. Trying. Because these two words are so close together, I'm actually just going to keep them separate so we kind of know that the poem starts again over here. So let me just start from the beginning. The cry seemed all noise, complete moments made to revive him. Deep in thoughts, great, busy, only his senses would fight the creature trying. Oh, I just need to find an ending. Trying to. Disappear. That's kind of fun. The last word's the last word on the page, too. Alright. So I'm going to try to read it one more time and see if I like it. And if I don't like anything, then, like I said, I can take a, w a wet cloth and start over or just adjust a few lines. The cry seemed all noise, complete moments made up to revive him. Deep in thoughts, great and busy, only his senses would fight the creature trying to disappear. I actually don't mind that too much. I think it's really a lot easier if you pick a book you haven't read in a while because then you can get distracted from the actual narrative of the story. I read, uh, I was reading a book recently and tried this on the book I had just been reading and I kept just starting to reread the page instead so it was a bit harder but I haven't read The Hobbit in a while so this worked a little bit better. So what a lot of people do when they're doing their found poetry right on paper is they'll then go and cross out all the other words to kind of make them hide. Um, so you can do that, you can just scribble them out. Some people draw really cool images around um, or you can just leave it like this when we're using the markers it makes it kind of hard to see where it connects so when I did it last time I didn't do the coloring in and I think that worked a little bit better but we'll give it a go this time especially on these big spaces and see how that works see it's kind of hard to read now I think I would have liked it better left plain um, but if you do really like your poem, what you can do is just stick your phone there and take a picture of it. Take a picture of the page and do it that way, um, which is actually a really fun way you can do this instead. Is you can start the same way, pick a random book, open it up, um, but then take a picture of the page. Make sure you can see all the words in your image. And then just go into the markup section, circle your words on there and block out the rest of the text, like I said, and then you actually have your poem to keep for the rest of the time. So that's really cool. And I'll send a few examples of that too. And there you have it. That's how easy it is to do found poetry art um, in your book without ruining your book. And it's still there ready to read.